How much of a degree are we going downhill right now? Uh, angle? Yeah. Um, they should tell us. Didn't no, it doesn't ever tell you degrees. It tell you degrees. We, we tend to stay away from... Scaring uh, people? Scaring people, exactly. Yeah. So, um, it, in the steep stuff, yeah. we probably at close to 30 degree downhill slope at, at times, but it's only in little pieces because the way it does this. Welcome to just outside of Sedona, Arizona, and I'm here with the brand spanking new Range Rover Diesel. And we're not going to be talking about the diesel today, but we are going to be talking about all the technology that makes these vehicles so off-road worthy. We're going to go up some steep hills, and we're going to go down some steep hills, and we're going to put these to the test. And that is coming up right now on the Fast Lane Car. talk about uh, just the uh, all-wheel drive system in general so there's a little button here called auto but you can select the different kinds of terrain but the auto button supposedly is smart enough to figure out what you need it takes some inputs from how it's feeling uh, with uh, traction being broken yep uh, hills going up and down because it's you know we got accelerometers yep. uh, gyroscopes um, all the basically uh, bells and whistles that that will be able to give it some feedback and to say, hey, you know what? I think I'm on real firm stuff. Let me go to rock crawl, hold some gears longer. It talks to traction control, hill descent control, a dynamic stability control, transmission shifting points and how to hold them, uh, throttle control. Each setting has a different throttle map or throttle ramp. The only one that's not a kind of a very linear change of the throttle map is sand mode. It actually, no matter what you do, if it's in sand mode, you can give it quite a bit of gas, and it's not going to allow it to give it that gas until it gets some momentum built up. Yeah, because that way want, you don't dig. You don't down. want to dig yourself in. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm using ATPC to go down this, uh, you know, relatively steep hill with a lot of loose rocks, which is actually more scary than the steepness of the hill, right? Yeah. The, the marbles tend to let you roll more than the, than the hill. steepness does. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I got to tell you, this is uh, on a scale of one to 10 in terms of how much like sweat and effort I'm putting into this, I'm gonna give it a one. It's so painless. One being the good side but, of yeah, it. The yeah, the easiest. Yeah, there's just nothing. Right I'm not even uh, you know concentrating that hard. I'm talking to you, obviously. So whatever magic you guys have uh, built into this uh, Range Rover is doing its thing, and I'm, I'm sincerely impressed. And the other thing about this is you got that kind of command seating position, so you feel like you're, Absolutely. Look, you're looking down onto uh, all the obstacles as opposed to kind of being among them. The crazy thing is we're not actually on, on dedicated off-road tires. We're riding on 20s, right? 20s with stock air pressure in them. With stock air pressure, yeah. That, that's pretty cool. The, the days when a wheel would whip around and break your thumb are probably long gone now. Pretty gone, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's for sure. We still tend to you know, follow um, technique before technology. Yeah. Technique is hands out of the wheel in case it kicks back on you. Technology is now we have electronic steering and it really doesn't kick back. But we want to teach a technique that works in any vehicle or any era of vehicle. And that way we don't get you lost with, you know, just like we would want to be in first gear. So if you click that paddle shift that's on your right side now, yep. it'll be in first. And that would be a technique as opposed to just relying on hill descent, Yeah, which is the technology. And we only have in this particular vehicle one locking center diff. But Correct. you can get a rear locking diff uh, as an option if you wanted to get really serious off-road. Our traction control system is, in my view, the best in the industry, especially at low low speeds. It's really good. It, it, you barely will break traction before traction control will come into play. So, you know, you don't need the rear locker as much until you get into some super hard stuff. And then it, it's not that the vehicle without a rear locker wouldn't do it. Traction control just has to work a little bit more to make sure that it gets up to the top smoothly. And just like with all-terrain progress control, terrain response, we pioneered. And that's why we don't typically put it in a full functioning vehicle until it's refined Range Rover style. What's uh, the ground clearance when we've got this air suspension? 10.9 in the standard off-road height. Okay. Uh, if, we, if we got hung up slightly, yep. it would actually raise up another inch and a half automatically. Okay. 
Uh, it has to see that the wheels are a little droopy and it's breaking traction still. So it goes to 11. It, it, well, it would go to um, almost 12 and 12.4. 12 okay. And then it immediately asks you, yeah. do you want more? Push and hold the button and then it'll go up another inch plus. So, so the 11 was a spinal tap reference. Correct. <laughs> there you go. Go up to 11. Got it. <laughs> so let me go up this hill. Now I've got my foot off, off, the, of off the accelerator. Oh, that was a little too fast. Yeah. I'm using dial it back a little yeah, more. I'm dialing it back. I'm dialing it back. I'm using the little plus and minus here to, to control the vehicle speed, and uh, we'll just let it uh, go. What's it, what's you're saying as uh, slow as, as possible. possible, as fast as necessary. You got it. So we're going very slowly up this hill. I'm sitting back. I'm kind of actually, you know, cruising. Uh, let's call it LA style. Up a pretty rutted road. Let's put your tire on that bigger step right in front of you, so a little left. Yep. yep got Hold it. that line right yep. there. Yep. And with the terrain response, the all-terrain progress control set at what you have it set at, watch what it does when it gets to the obstacle. All right, here we come. Okay, we're gonna get that. Oh, it slowed down just a little bit until it got over it. And if you were at one notch below that, yep. it would have actually stopped, yep. and you'd feel like one RPM at a time increase <laughs> until yeah. it finally starts moving again. It is really impressive. When it's an abrupt step, it yeah. definitely could be slower. Yeah. That's why you can always override it with your brake. Yeah, because I've got it. I've got it to the slowest possible yep. setting right now. I always say you got to read that mental map of the of the train in front of you, and then kind of picture it traveling underneath the vehicle. Yeah, you know, I think. Uh, a common misconception that a lot of newbies off-road make is that they see a big rock like that and try to straddle it. All right now, we've got a little bit of a dip there and a photographer, so shall I just floor it and give him a little bit of a Dukes of Hazard? Uh... We, we prefer not. <laughs> okay, yes. all right. It, you know, we don't like to show the wrong things. You can really do a Dukes of Hazard off that one over there. Absolutely. <laughs> so if you're interested in the diesel, we have done a review of the Range Rover Sport with the diesel, and you can watch that by clicking above because it's the exact same three liter as in this one. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fast Lane Car. Check out tflcar.com for more news, views, and of course, Range Rover off-road reviews. See you next time, ciao. I am 69 miles north of Phoenix, Arizona, where Range Rover flew me down here to test this new turbo diesel Range Rover. And I have to tell you, on the highway, I am seriously impressed. According to the vehicle, we're getting 25.1 MPG to the gallon, doing about 75, all right, maybe 80 miles an hour. And for a very big and very heavy vehicle, that is indeed impressive.